Okay, so uh, today's class is uh, again for trying to help you better designing your system. So last Thursday and next Thursday, Luigi helped you in with the component selection phase uh, and then trying to discuss uh, a bit more in details with, with examples and practical questions and suggestions uh, the uh, design of the architecture, okay? Um, so the, the system architecture of your project or, or the, let's say, uh, system that implements uh, your project idea. Um, so let's start to, to think about what we need to decide, actually, okay? Uh, we can just uh, start implementing, but we first have a, need to have a clear picture about uh, our system. These are a couple of definitions that we found uh, of uh, what a system architecture is. Uh, they're not very helpful. Uh, I try, like, like this, uh, the next one will be, uh, I try to highlight uh, uh, the most important keywords here. I will want to describe the system. So before starting to implement or to, to buy a component or to connect something, we need to describe what we want to do. And uh, architecture is about structure and behavior. Structure is what are the objects that I need and behaviors are what these objects will do for me. We need to put, uh, to design and to think about the two together. Then at, at a given point, we will freeze the structure. So we already decided the components and we start working or focusing on the behaviors. No? So how to program or how to configure or how to use them. Mm -hmm. But in the initial phase, we need to think uh, uh, um, together at these two different aspects. And uh, <coughs> this means defining the components. So what are the individual items that we include in our project as well as the relationships? The difference between ar an architecture and just a list of components is uh, understanding how these components relate to each other. These components is here because it's needed for a given functionality or is needed to connect to another components or uh, they, these two need to communicate and so on. Hmm? And so this, we, this, this will help us uh, think about uh, um, whether a given solution really fits uh, the needs of our project. This third definition is something that is more closely related to what we are doing. It's taken from a software engineering institute at CMU. And they said that the system architecture is a representation of a system Okay, we want to represent our system before <laughs> we start to, to develop it, including a mapping of functionality onto hardware and software components. I like this one. We already thought and uh, discussed about the functionalities of the system, and these functionalities are just wishes. I want my system to be able to. The user will need uh, or will have this functionality and so on. So it's just a wish until you map this functionality onto a piece of software and or a piece of hardware that is able to implement that functionality, okay? And uh, speaking about software, software is not independent. It doesn't run by itself. Software always needs to be run on some hardware, on some specific form of hardware that we can program ourselves. So it's not just mapping functionalities onto software and other, and other components, but also mapping the software architecture. So all the software components and how do they exchange information onto the hardware architecture. So this software function is on this hardware platform. This other software function is on the same or on a different platform. And if the two software entities need to communicate well, given that they are on the same platform or on different computers, the way of communication will be different, okay? And the, trade, the design trade-off will be different. And uh, not least uh, is the human interaction. So which of these components actually interact with the user? Only the sensor, only the smartphone, only the tablet, only the computer, or a combination of, the, of, of this. Hmm? So this is a... Starting from this uh, definition, hmm, I try to 
think about your project and make a sort of a set of checklists so as uh, we will uh, have a, a lot of questions ma question marks here that will help us uh, know, to, to decide so first of all I'm going to help myself with a with a visual mapping uh, we designed uh, or we de defined for our projects uh, the features okay and you wrote them down and uh, uh, each feature is implemented through a set of different functionalities so I try to write that a feature is something that is user visible okay something that can be explained to the user uh, the user can call it can require that feature to be activated can use it uh, it's self-contained uh, a self-contained system behavior something that doesn't need any further explanation you already understand what it is because it brings value to the user so it's something rather high level okay so this computer can go into the sleep mode that's a feature something that I can understand I can activate it uh, I can check and for me it's a good thing that feature requires a lot of small functionalities for going to the sleep mode I need a way to activate it so with a key combination or by closing the lid or by unplugging or automatically by sensing the, the, the you know the battery status and what does it do it's a software component of or freezing the state of all the application and, uh, and then saving the state of virtual memory into hard disk uh, just a, an example that has nothing to do with our project but just to show that there's a big difference between something that is useful for the user and the set of many different functionalities that are uh, independent uh, uh, capabilities of the system that are needed to complete uh, one functionality one one feature sorry hmm? and when we start implement we implement each of these functionalities because we need them for one or more features and this feature sh uh, this picture shows that features overlap in some way so there may be some functionality so maybe the system is able to detect whether a person is in the house that information that functionality is useful for different features brought by the system hmm? so there's overlap here in fact functionalities are some functions actions reactions computations and so on the individual uh, it's a atomic i would say but uh, i didn't uh, write in it because it's not actually atomic it's uh, many lives of code um, uh, behavior of the system so this is what we want to reach in abstract okay we just want to have this set of functionalities but we need to have a concrete a specific real set of hardware and software components so the architecture of our system is made of uh, software components and hardware components mainly and the hardware components for me are split in two different categories programmable and non-programmable components hmm. so if you have for example a personal computer a raspberry an arduino board they are programmable you can write your program and run it on that platform if you have a, a smart sensor if you have a bluetooth beacon if you have any other kind of smart device well theoretically it is programmable because inside there is a cpu there's a microcontroller but you cannot control what this program does it's not programmable to you or to me so for us it's just a hardware component uh, maybe it's too stupid to be programmable like just a sensor for example uh, and so it's just uh, an electronic device that gives you an, a current or a resistance uh, reading so there's nothing to program or maybe it's more intelligent like a smart sensor uh, a smart home device that is a, a program a program device it has been programmed by someone but it's not programmable by us for for us it is the same it's not it's something that we can use if we want their functionality as it is we cannot change it in any way you can program it anyway and we have a relationship between software and hardware because every software component needs a hardware platform to run on so it's not possible to have a software component uh, that runs uh, i don't know everywhere 
on the cloud the cloud doesn't exist it's some, some computer okay always some computer so always be clear about uh, okay with this functionality i need to do some i don't know image processing for recognizing whether a person is in the room okay where does this code run on which computer may i may have a choice or i may not have a choice because maybe there's only one computer that is capable of, of running that uh, but this is just an information there's a first relationship between these components and i use hardware components because they are needed for running some software or because they are needed to connect some lower level non-programmable devices so if i have a sensor that only gives an analog an analog output i need a hardware compo programmable a hardware component like an arduino board to read that information uh, to do all the analog to digital conversion and to read uh, have the data and send it to some other computer where the data can be used okay so these are the the main components that we want hmm? so software components can be libraries functions apis so i have an api i want to implement it there and module some sort of computation depends on okay the functionality of the system and these programmable components can be well, generically every computer so it can be a laptop can be a desktop can be a server somewhere so imagine something which is powerful but far away a server is not in your house it's something outside maybe a raspberry pi a microcontroller like an arduino a smartphone a tablet they are computing nodes they are programmable hardware they also are have a lot of other sensors on board but they are a, a component that has some programmability so you can program you can decide what this component does and so these programmable components are the physical layer for implementing the software components you can design them separately but then you need to map uh, which software runs where so for example does the user interface run is implemented as a web application running on a raspberry and i use my, my smartphone just to browse the website so this interface is running on the, the raspberry pi or is the user interface implemented as an android application so it's running on the smartphone there are two different choices design is choosing analyzing alternatives uh, but there are different choices so the functionality is the same i have a user interface with such functions what are what is the advantage of running the user interface on the raspberry for example as a web application <clears throat> maybe it's faster to implement <coughs> maybe being on the server or on the computer in my home already has all the information connect can connect to the sensors can read the data from the database and then just present the results as a web page can be accessed by different devices and uh, the advantage of uh, writing that as a native uh, application so in, in the java android uh, maybe it's fast will be faster will be nicer the graphics will be nicer will be faster we don't need to connect uh, for every change for every page but maybe the data that i need is not available on the smartphone of course because maybe some data um, measured by a sensor in the house and so it needs to communicate with an api so i need another component to bring the data from the back end to the front end hmm? we need to, to think about these things and uh, to decide how we do how we want our project to work and why especially hmm? uh, to make a choice which is uh, more complex than we really need uh, we need a good motivation so if possible oh, my my <laughs> message here is uh, if possible try to think about different ways of uh, obtaining the same result with a smaller number of components smaller number of software programs smaller number of hardware devices and so on use more only if you need them for some reason hmm? and we we'll try to analyze the reasons okay and then we have the non-programmable components uh, that are 
that's needed mainly, mainly for sensing and acting, but also in some case for displaying, for communication, for interaction for the user. Hmm. Okay, so we said at the beginning an architecture is a mapping between the set of functions needed to implement the features and the components that we have available. So I need this component because it's required by these two functionalities. And in turn, these functionalities are needed for implementing a given feature. So this is something that was difficult to see, I wouldn't say missing, uh, in, your, in many of the deliverable tools that, uh, uh, that I revised last week. Uh, there was no clear link or clear connection between what we declared as the, the features that we want and the actual hardware choices so do you need this sensor why what is it needed for can it be replaced with something else okay the, the reason mainly is uh, that probably we were thinking about these features maybe at a high level too high level and we didn't give them importance say okay yes let's write let's just write something and then go back to coding actually the list of features is sort of a, a contract that we have with our user i'm promising you that the system will do this uh, operation will be able to do these features to implement these features and then my work as a designer would be to find the right comp well, combination of hardware and software and devices to implement those features okay never think of a sensor of a platform of a computer never think of it uh, without thinking at the, the, at the functionality that that they implement okay otherwise you find yourself into uh, you know close corners where okay i i need this sensor i don't find it or it's difficult to use or this has some problem how can i replace it or what can i do well replacing one component with another means understanding why this component is needed for which function and then thinking about is there any other alternative different way of of, of, of obtaining the same function okay so always choose the function you need and later find the good components for obtaining that if you try to start from the components if they don't work out the first uh, attempt uh, then you will get in trouble because you don't have the the framework for redesigning that part of the so and okay uh, another layer i didn't know to how to write or how to draw that on the same picture so i made a different picture where the components have been you know, uh, put uh, uh, in into the whole space all available space and i added these uh, um, orange arrows saying who needs uh, to exchange information with exchanging data with so this component maybe is a distance sensor the the redder one the ultrasonic sensor needs to be connected to an arduino board for example that will read the data and so this data is exchanged here and this data doesn't stay here there will be a software component so a small program that will write uh, to pick this data and send it to some more powerful computer where maybe it's stored okay so we need to understand the the data flow where data flows from and to who needs to exchange data with whom okay and these data are not are exchanged are managed not for fun but always in response of some functionality need i need this data because because at the end the user will need to see whether the light is on or off or whether i am i need to have a, a red or 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 green light for a given feature hmm? so always think always think about functionalities even when you are just uh, you know sending a string over 
why is the string useful to this node hmm? so this is the if you start thinking this way you will try find probably find a ways of simplifying stuff because nobody says that these two com maybe these two components well here they are separate should we merge them can what what does it mean to merge two hardware components it means that the software running on both one and the two will run just on one instead of running on two separate computers the software running on the first and the second will run on the same machine and uh, all the sensors or hardware components that are connected to the first and those that are connected to the second will need to be connected to the same platform can we do that depends of course if we can do that I'm, we are simplifying the architecture we are getting the same result with a, with a less effort but if this uh, is a sensor that is an analog output for example okay we can because uh, raspberry doesn't have analog inputs so we need an arduino board just because that kind of sensor is only supported by that kind of platform so we cannot merge them hmm? um, or is, if a software component is too demanding from the cpu point of view or is written in a language that is not supported you know you, you have a, an application that already solves all your problem you downloaded that from the internet but it's written in, uh, in, um, in C sharp and only runs under Windows and so it, wo it won't be able to run on Raspberry because the Windows doesn't run the Raspberry so you need a PC and maybe a Raspberry for doing something else so it depends on there's a, lo a lot of constraints okay that in some cases may force us to make the architecture more complex made of different pieces hmm? um we'll we'll see some examples later but even if we repartition the architecture in a different way the data flow will remain this software needs to exchange information with that software in any case if they are in, on two different mapped onto do two different computers or if they are mapped onto the same computer they need to exchange data anyway because they don't know the sensor analysis part and the acting part uh, needs to exchange information about whether you need to intervene or to do some actions so if these two are on the same computer it will be easier to communicate among them because they are on the same cpu and the same machine they can share the same database connection it can they can communicate through a socket through a shared file or another hundred means if they are on separate computers well it becomes more difficult of course more complex because you need an, a client server api huh, for reading the data and then you need to decide whether this one is pushing the data to the other so this one as an api for receiving data or this second is pulling data for the first from the first so the, you have an, an api for publishing the data here and the client will will uh, pull data when it when it needs it hmm? so there will be many more choices or a different architectural choices depending on the mapping between hardware and software but this data transfer will be needed anyway in any case hmm? between the software modules so this is the kind of pictures or the ideas uh, then you can put them in pictures or in words or in uh, diagrams uh, that we need to um, let's say use uh, to communicate our system architecture okay it's uh, one possible final point of our reasoning we i want to implement the system so we started from here okay here this picture doesn't have any hardware any software just functions abstract and we wanted to implement them by mapping to some components and uh, of course in this case these components need to interact with each other in a specific way this mapping is not unique it's your design you decide 
to map these functionalities onto this set of components it can be done in many different ways okay like you started to see with luigi the, on la last thursday uh, the choice of, of the components may be different okay and also the choice of the interface and also the choice of the computation can be different and every choice choice that you make in the in the selection of components the algorithms the interfaces and so on will lead to a different architecture so as long as we documented the functionality of the system we also need to document its architecture and this is also the way to partition the work you're working as a group not as individuals so if you have different software components to write to implement to code you have different hardware components to integrate to connect to read data to understand the apis or the interface for reading data from them so if you have a clear view, view of the picture then one of you can focus on this other this software component i start writing this one i know what's for i know where is needed i know which kind of data it needs to exchange and i know who is working on the other side of this data pipeline or the data flow and so you, it's easy at this point it's easy it's possible to partition the work because it's clear if for each module is clear well more clear <laughs> what is needed for and what is the functionality that that's uh, it will be implemented okay that is required by the system if you don't have this clear then it will be very it will be much more difficult for you to cooperate because i'm writing this part but i thought you were doing that uh, actually we don't at the end we don't match hmm? so it's a risk that we're trying to to mitigate here okay so let's try to translate this result which is just a picture into a process how do we get there so i will never get tired enough uh, of saying let's start from the feature and start from the functionalities a project is not a bunch of hardware and you know it's not even a bunch of hardware plus a bunch of code uh, a project a working project is uh, some hardware some code that is needed to implement some features and these features are there sorry to implement some some functionalities and these functionalities are there for providing the user with some features okay so that is the part the important part if you don't have that clear then we will have no criteria for selecting for choosing an, an option over another okay you will get uh, you will fall in love with the library you will fall in love with a sensor and try to design your project around that sensor around that library huh? and what happens uh, is that you create something that is amorphous or or a monstrosity that uh, uh, it's uh, now always have this clear and uh, always spend some time exploring the alternatives i have a functionality how do i implement it can i choose to implement this functionality in software or can i choose to implement it in hardware i don't know if i need to check whether a person is sitting in front of a computer i can use uh, monitoring of the operating system so is this user moving the mouse or the keyboard or i can use the the camera and do some analysis on the camera so in doing some software or software with a sensor embedded into the device or it can put a, sen a weight sensor under the chair to see whether they're sitting or a movement sensor on the table so they this will be hardware solutions for getting basically the same result for having the uh, response to the question is the user working at the computer depends on the definition of working of course because you could be sitting and sleeping and the hardware sensor will see you there but you won't be working really but depends on what again it depends on the on the feature of the system 
do you just need to check whether a person is there or do you also need to check who what is doing what he is doing hmm? but in any feature needed feature there are many alternatives <coughs> okay that's what i was thinking when i said don't fall in love with the sensor oh, it's not a, uh it's not uh, nice to imagine um or not don't try to focus too soon on a given solution okay always think about the alternatives those are the ones that will help you find a better architecture okay and also will help you in uh, you know uh, solving problems when they will arise because you always have some alternative in mind okay you choose one because it seems the most logical the best the better the easiest and so on um and how to explore alternatives always is starting from user visible features if you start from something for example if i say how to recognize an object it can be implemented in many ways maybe a, a recognize is a word is a word that brings to my mind the computer vision but maybe it's not computer uh, it can i can of course implement that with the computer vision approach but i could also implement it with a tagging approach so the the the, the object is tagged in some way in visual space you know a qr code or in the electronic space like an rfid saying uh, tag it's a, another possibility or maybe I'm taking something that this object is connected to. So maybe it's, it's uh, something connected to the user. Or, or maybe it's, this object is intelligent, so I can open a communication with that object. And so if I can reach it, then it's there. Or well, there are many, depends on, of, of course, depends on, on the context. But if the need, the requirement is uh, high level enough, we can reason about the, architect the, the alternatives. If the same uh, has been written as uh, how to sense a tag place on the object, it's, it's, a, it's a question that doesn't give us space for exploring alternative solutions. Or oh, the, sol the alternative solution would be very narrow. narrow. Uh, which kind of tags? So maybe we only want one or two different possibilities while the same solution recognizing an object could be done in a very in a in a really different way in a much different way okay this is what i i try to, to to refer when i started to think about features and express the feature and ask yourself how can i implement the feature and not how can i implement uh, the implementations hmm? right here we are already at, at, at a lower level we already made a lot of choices using text is a, ch a technology choice why okay maybe i choose a tag because it's the best choice for implementing a given functionality but you should always motivate your choices thinking about the user oh this is better it's better for the user or it's better for the project or it's easier to implement or it's faster to implement or it allows me to simplify my system there are many uh, many criteria for choosing one solution over another but the only hope you have for choosing for having this choice is thinking at, at the higher level and always seek for the simplest and safest way okay don't make anything more complex if you can do it simpler it may seem a stupid advice but uh, actually engineers are uh, a very strange brand of human beings and they try to complicate their lives and uh, we constantly need to remember them uh, to go for the simple way and try to see the simple way if it's there simplest means uh, less complexity less component less code less time and safest safest here i mean uh, i safe, safe for you as a student so find a safe way so that you are don't risking too much uh, for your exam 
there's not safety about the explosions or features or something like that so um, some find a way where you are confident that you can reach the end you can implement actually what you want with that technology okay so in every project there will be something for sure that is new to you is new is you never tried it uh, okay it's normal but try to minimize the novelty and minimize the risks okay if it's a way that it maybe it's not so simple it's not the simplest but it's a way that I already tried i'm already confident with that technology i'm already confident with that language so maybe mm, it would be one reason to choose a way over another but these two criteria can i make it simpler or can i minimize the risk in implementing the system are maybe two very strong criteria which uh, don't impact don't have an effect on the user visible features this is what we are doing we are trying to implement the same features for the user in a different way in a way that is better for us but we are implementing the same features but we try and mix until we find a way of implementing those that satisfies our minimality criteria okay so going to more detail programmable hardware what uh, in the checklist for d2 i, I called uh, computing nodes uh, that creates some confusion so the, what today i call the uh, programmable hardware so the first question is how many how many computers do i need how many cpus do i need in the project one two seven well if i apply the criteria the minimality criteria is the less cpu the better if i can implement my project by relying only on one computer why not there's no value in itself of having five different raspberries if one would be enough of course if i have one computer you i will try to make uh, to use the smallest or the cheapest one available that is sufficient to do the job but if i should move to a distributed architecture where i have more than one cpu only if it's needed by some of the conditions that i'm going to list in a second okay so i can motivate the move from one computer to two for from two to three and so on only some of these conditions some exceptions match otherwise why should i make my life more complicated okay um oh again when i'm talking about computing nodes programmable hardware it's everything okay from the arduino to the raspberry to a pc to a server to a smartphone to a tablet everything i can write and run programs on okay so one easy question question is uh, how powerful so a lot of people in the discussion said why i asked why do you need a server here oh because the raspberry is not powerful enough really are you sure it's a computer with uh, a 64-bit processor with a running at mm, one gigahertz or so or some or not much less than that do, do you really think that it will not be capable enough for running your algorithm maybe i don't know hmm? but just because it's small doesn't mean that it's not powerful enough okay uh, it depends on what you need to do of course but then if you need to do more to something more powerful maybe you can have a, a pc a real computer instead of a raspberry or a real computer in addition to the raspberry so if one raspberry by itself is not enough should they have two nodes or just one of course it depends on all these criteria but let's ask ourselves these questions okay let's not just add the stuff to the project because 
So one possibility is uh, power, computing power. Or is there too much power? I need I, more, well, something less powerful would be, would be enough. What kind of, oh, uh, and how can I know how much power do I need on a computer? It depends on the software. Which software needs to run on that device? You see, the choice of the hardware depends on, the, on where do we want to map the software functions. Hmm? And the power of a platform or a node is not just CPU power. It's also input-output capabilities. So we know that in Arduino there's a lot of input-outputs, uh, analog and digital, for interfacing stupid things, stupid in the computer sense, so just non-intelligent. Uh, the Raspberry also has a GPIO pings, uh, but they are more limited than the Arduino, they are less programmable, are just digital. But maybe it can have the Raspberry shield that runs on the Raspberry for connecting to Z-Wave sensors. Or uh, the Raspberry Pi has already Wi-Fi and Bluetooth integrated. Not all Arduinos have them. If I have a, 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 a computer, a desktop computer, it will have eight, probably, Bluetooth, uh, sorry, uh, USB ports. Uh, the Raspberry only has uh, four Bluetooth ports or five, and uh, the Arduino doesn't have any. It only has a Bluetooth slave port, not a master one. Mm -hmm. So many limitations will come from input-output. not from the cpu yes also from the cpu the cpu is easier to see mm -hmm. i need a network and uh, wired into ethernet connection a pc or a battery uh, arduino doesn't have ethernet arduino doesn't run tcp ap it's too simple or tcp ap is too complex for it and so on mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so in this case we may have some project features that requires splitting the hardware into more components because some have maybe the power the computing power and some other have the comp the connectivity so i need to split and then there will be additional problem because uh, if i split a, a computer in two then i need to find a way for exchanging data between the two of course it's more work always so this is one reason for increasing the number of computing nodes above the minimum one location is another reason some kind of computations needs need to be constrained or need or are feasible only if uh, the nodes the computing nodes the hardware is in a specific location if you need to access a, a sensor in your house well the cpu in the sensor should be in the house because if you read it over Z-Wave or ZigBee or NFC or Bluetooth, the, all of these are short range protocols. So the CPU reading the sensor should be in the same place where the sensor is. Or if you're reading something over a serial line, why not? Why, why making everything wireless over a, a good old serial lines, a couple of wires can be enough but they cannot run kilometers only run some meters so we have some constraints of co-location being in the same place between a computer and some sensor that it needs to, or actuators that it needs to interact with if you want to drive uh, the uh, philips u lights you sh you must be in the same under the same wi-fi as the hub as the philips hub so it poses a a constraint over the location of the node and at the same maybe at the same time you need uh, an, a user interface that the user can access from inside the house but also from outside the house something that where he, when the user is at work or is traveling he needs to go and check something so in that case uh, that functionality must be accessible from outside the house from any internet location so in that case, it cannot be a, a server inside your house. It should be a server into some accessible 
data center so there may be reasons to split again computing nodes uh, based on the location constraints this node must be in the house this node must be outside and so i need two different nodes one would be maybe enough would be sufficient from the computing pipe point of power point of view by the functionality they implement require them to the to be in different locations may happen okay um, if you are implementing something on the smartphone the smartphone by itself is moving goes with you and so it cannot be used for example for controlling the sensor you now in your house because otherwise when you're outside your house will be dead because we will not be controlled by any anything more so you will need some device that stays in the house for controlling the sensor and the two items right so power capabilities cpu and input output location are criteria that could require more than one computers and the connections again is more or less uh, located with the input output capabilities but in general every device has a limited uh, amount of uh, interfaces network interfaces so you have a pc then can have a uh, ethernet and wi-fi and probably bluetooth but it doesn't have the cellular capabilities if you have, if you, if you have a computer if you have a smartphone it has all of these but it cannot it can plug a serial line to that or a usb connection for uh, speaking directly to a device hmm? and so in this case you you maybe need uh, and in many cases uh, i I've seen project where we need uh, uh, maybe a, just an arduino for doing the gateway for talking to a sensor reading the data and just sending it uh, to uh, to a raspberry for example just because we don't have the all the full set of protocols maybe the arduino didn't have the the bluetooth in that case uh, and so you need to go through another device and another question which is more more difficult is about scalability so we are thinking of a project that is very minimal in scale it only needs to be run on a table and I already told you many, many times, okay, only find one location, one sensor, one user, just to prove that the system can be done, to prove the feasibility of the prototype. Okay, this is for the implementation. But for the design, we must think about uh, the deployment, the general deployment of the system. So if it's a system, that should be installed into many houses are these houses all independent from each other so i install the system in, in house number one with all the computers that i need the sensor and so on if i need to make a second installation in a different house i just copy the same and they work independently without exchanging data this is a possibility but if i need uh, to have some information to manage some information or some features or some interfaces that are common to the different installations for example the list of the users or if you are doing some sort of a social ranking how, ma how many points do you have in your system and so some information is not specific to a single place but it's uh, overall about the whole system so in that case uh, you imagine that you have uh, maybe one server with the user database and many other servers controlling each house okay there are some functions that if you increase the number of installations some functions are just uh, shared the same function will control more houses and some other are need to be replicated Mm. you need to multiply the sensors you need to multiply the local gateways you need to multiply the user interfaces if you increase the number of houses if you increase the number of users while the general database with the user logins stays the same so in that in that case it doesn't make sense to 
have a copy of the user logins in every house. You only put it once in an external, in an independent place. So thinking about scalability may, may depends on the, on the project, uh, tell you that uh, some functions could be shared across different installations. And so from the architectural point of view, they better live on a separate computer because that computer will not, will doesn't need to be multiplied, doesn't need to be changed if the number of installation changes. This is not a strict requirement for us because we only create one prototype. But it's, the architecture will be cleaner uh, if you start, okay, thinking about this is one, if I need to, to create two, which parts can be shared? And the part that can be shared uh, should be separated from the others. That will help you to design better protocols, better APIs because you already start thinking that these two need to be separated and so you need an API for the two to communicate, to share information. Okay? Especially about user data, especially about databases or sensors data. Where do I store this data? Can it be stored locally in the house because it's not needed by the other houses or should it be in some way shared because it's needed for the other users? Hmm? So this is another nasty question devices okay for devices we already had a very good discussion with, with Luigi that tried to answer to the question which ones so, so which are the devices and devices I remember I, th I mean non programmable hardware so stupid hardware analog electronics or microcontrollers that you cannot reprogram so they're only doing their job and the main constraints uh, for using a device over another, for choosing a device over another, are the connections, connectivity of the devices. Depending on the device, uh, I need a different way of connecting to it. Some devices only have two pins. Some devices uh, already are able to speak uh, a wireless protocol. Some devices need to be queried. Some devices just propagate their data. Some devices need to be managed by a controller, by hub, like Philips use. You cannot speak directly to the bulb. You need to go through the hub, and then the hub will control the light, the light bulb, and so on. Doing the wires or not. So depending on the component that you choose, the component will bring itself uh, a lot of other additional constraints to be operated, basically. The component only works in this way and so you need something on the hardware side and maybe also something on the software side but basically we are thinking about hardware here you need something on the hardware side to be interfaced with it so if we had every sensor that speaks wi-fi they would speak wi-fi then we will have uh, any freedom of choice because every you know, computer can speak wi-fi but mm, actually no sensor <laughs> and no actuator is able to speak in this way they always use simpler protocols and you need additional hardware whether it's a bluetooth interface on an arduino or a raspberry or a raspberry shield or a philips hub something in the middle to manage the device okay so depending on the, on the device that we choose we have some additional hardware that is needed for them and it's not just hardware because you may have the Philips bulb connected to the Philips hub and then you need some software that reads the data or sends the data. You may have uh, the um, Z-Wave multi-sensor that reads data and that is connected to the Z-Wave controller on the Raspberry and then you need some software on the Raspberry or another computer that the query the queries the API on the Raspberry for getting data from the sensor. So it's always thinking about sensor the sensor has some electronics in it to read some value you need to bring this value to a database somewhere or to a user interface somewhere so you need the first uh, step is a hardware step connecting the pieces so that a microcontroller somewhere can read the data and then you need to take this data and to store it somewhere and so you need the software part of managing the data is the data important yes 
do i need to store it do i need to show it to the user do we need to take some action mm. so it's always a pipeline that starts from the little sensor and goes up to the the general interface and so depending on the software that needs to use this data then maybe it's better to connect the sensor in a way or in a, you know, in a different way if i can put the sensor closer to the software that needs the data i will have less work to do less data transfers less protocol changes hmm. so always try to keep your software and the data that the software is working on as close as possible hmm. with a uh, smaller number of hops of steps hmm? of jumps and uh, how many protocols do we need so if i choose a system where i have one z-wave sensor one bluetooth sensor one uh, long-range beacon one uh, wi-fi device and so on i will have to manage seven eight different 14 different protocols and i will great will be crazy managing them all okay so if possible if you are using more than one device so more than one sensor or actuators if possible try try to share the same protocol to, ch to choose devices that may use the same protocol hmm? in order to avoid having too many different di protocol types uh, into your project eh? that will drive you crazy it's already one or two will be already hard to do so maybe i'm using a component which is not the best in the world for this job but okay since i'm already using that component with that protocol i'm choosing the second best in the world but speak that speaks that that the protocol that they already have that they already already managed that already wrote software for hmm. so i uh, always this you see this minimality criteria keeps popping up uh, every time trying to choose the components on the basis of the of the data it gets but this data is needed because some functionality is requires it for some user feature and uh, among the many ways of getting the data try to do something that makes it easier for the software to get the information okay so software is connected where the soft uh, uh, device is connected where the software is running and using a protocol for which you already have code that may be used in a different part of the system okay well it is a these are just examples of pipelines no for maybe you have a distance sensor that is mounted on an arduino board uh, physically with wires and the Arduino might be is connected to a serial line, maybe a serial, just two wires or a USB serial connection to the uh, Raspberry where we have a Python program for polling the data. Why are you doing that? Because the, the distance sensor cannot be mounted directly in the Raspberry because the Raspberry doesn't have the analog input capabilities. Well, actually, there could be some. Uh, shields for the raspberry some additional shields that you can plug into the gpio and and give you analog input capabilities so that could be an alternative why do you need an arduino if i only need uh, its uh, analog to digital converter i don't need it for anything else i'm using an external board with a microcontroller memory and programming language and so on just for the adc analog to digital conversion why don't we add an adc to the raspberry we buy with with four dollars a shield integrating into the raspberry and doing the analog to digital conversion on the raspberry no? it would be a choice let's consider it let's think about it okay never just rest at the first uh, option or maybe i need to display some data that's coming from a multi-sensor in the wave so the z wave protocol talk to the ra ra raspberry shield that is mounted on the raspberry pi and then the raspberry the raspberry shield offers an api and this api can be used locally by a program running on the raspberry or by the smartphone that runs on the same local network that can call the apis on the raspberry which is mounted on the raspberry so in this case the raspberry doesn't do practically nothing except uh, 
sharing is its uh, wi-fi connection because the smartphone will, will uh, connect directly to the api offered by the raspberry shield but we need it because the only place where the raspberry can live is on to a uh, raspberry so we always uh, have some hmm, some choices to make and finally about software well again starting from functionality hmm? why do we need uh, the software for what functionalities are we trying to cover hmm? and especially software development that takes uh, weeks hmm? for uh, it's very important to have clearly in mind what is the software for because when you start to write it you start to deviate uh, from your ideas or just to focus too much on the implementation and maybe you end up with implementing something which is not really what you need hmm? okay but apart from this the question of, about software is where does it run so the mapping again at the beginning we decided uh, do we have one or more cpu one or more computer if you have only one then all the software will run there if you have more than one then where is the software running every different fun software functionality okay and uh, if we have if we have more than one hardware component uh, we had a reason why we chose more than one and probably this reason will be the same for helping us to understand where the software will go so for example if the reason was locality having something in the out and something acceptable from outside then if that software needs to be accessible from outside then it will go into the outside server if the software will be needed uh, to or uh, to manage the sensor then it will go into the in-house computer hmm? so these choices about software and hardware are not independent actually we are thinking about the same system and just seeing it from different points of view there are some cases where we have a choice is it better to run the software on the smartphone or on the server well depends hmm? depends on what well one uh, problem usually is access to the data every program needs to access some data so you will have uh, some database mysql or sqlite where your data is stored Uh, is this database local does the data oh is the data only needed uh, to the software that is producing it or is this data needed by other software so imagine you have a program that, f that gets a reading from the sensor every 10 seconds and store them into a, da um, that, uh, into a database this data will be probably useful for another application another software that makes a dashboard a chart with the values so this data needs to be shared in some way so is the database shared two software can read can access the same data well you can share database only if uh, you are on the same machine you cannot have one mysql running on a computer and another computer accessing directly mysql well technically you can but from a security point of view they will kill you hmm? you never expose a database directly outside your computer but if you have two software on the same computer they can access both uh, mysql and run with the same data this is what you this uh, you cannot do that with sqlite because sqlite is just a file a SQLite file database and you cannot open in read write the same file from two different processes hmm? SQLite is not multi-user it's not multi-process it's just every program has its own database but it cannot share the information the, the database cannot be shared uh, between different programs running at the same time only one at a time so it's an another architectural choice or you have this data local to a computer and this computer offers an api to query the data 
so do you access directly the data if you are on the same machine or do you access the data remotely so the data is stored in a machine and so if another machine another software running on a different machine needs the data then the first one will expose an api for reading this data it's another choice of course it was, it's much more complex much more work having some data here and writing a web, web application for sharing piece of of this data to another computer if you can it will be better to merge them hmm? um, but uh, the, lo the location of the data should also be decided uh, considering scalability no? scalability as if i have more than one house uh, where is the most logical location for this specific piece of information And so, depending on these choices, then we will have a long list of uh, APIs to implement huh? or databases to implement. Software just needs CPUs and data. If you have a computing node capable enough, it's just a matter of uh, having the data it needs. Software doesn't need anything else. Hmm? But you need to match these two. And uh, software needs to share information and communicate with other software modules so if two programs are on the same computer well it would be easier for them to communicate one can call the other they can share that database for so they share information they can open a socket and exchange information and so on if they are on different computing nodes uh, of course they need to use uh, rest apis so we need to implement all the rest apis for all the needed functionalities so it's another criteria that tells us <coughs> split software onto different nodes only if really needed if it's really required for different reasons so this was just a long list of questions huh, that we should ask ourselves uh, and uh, for each of these questions the answer is always a combination a combination of what we know about the system requirements the features the functionalities and what we know about the technology if you think none of these questions can be answered without understanding the technology but none of, the, none of these questions could also be answered without understanding the system features the, the functionality that we want from our system And in understanding these questions, we create, we define actually our architecture. And the most important part is the, what we called before, the system architecture with this picture that I showed at the beginning. You, you can draw them better than I, I do, of course, but uh, the idea is that I have an overall view of what the system, what my system is composed of. What hardware, software components, what devices, and what are the major interconnections between these devices? Who needs to exchange data with it? Which is the data flow? Components and data flow. I think there are two more important ingredients. The system architecture is the arrival point of all these questions, of all these uh, uh, analysis of alternatives. We um, we let's say synthesize we have a very short summary of all the decisions that we made all the answers to these questions in this picture this picture will tell us a lot about the philosophy no uh, or the approach that we follow in design and we see how many nodes we see where are the software going where is the user interacting and so on don't forget that uh, in the system architecture we need to make the user visible what are the points of this architecture where the user interacts the user interface the the, the um, on the smartphone on the website uh, on the voice interface where is the user hmm? because all the rest can be changed more easily but this interaction is already you know fixed uh, in the in the project features and once we have this uh, system architecture this big picture then it will be easier not to to go into more details about okay let's now let's make the list uh, 
of which computer nodes we need uh, which devices and so on which software you need to to to, to define clients and servers because now we have the partitioning of different nodes so we know which apis we need to expose and which uh, who will be the client of these apis hmm? and finally the network architecture uh, you know that some of you are doing some network um, uh, the network course in parallel with this one and we start to understand the complexity of routing in tcp ip and especially in the polytechnical networks where many ports are closed on the, over the wi-fi and it's very difficult to access one server inside from the outside so you will probably need some help uh, you know, in uh, in finding the right way of uh, if especially if you need to access some components inside and some components outside of the project hmm, for the specific uh, network architecture of the of polytechnical but uh, ne the network architecture is always for us split in two layers the tcp ap connections used among computers so if you have all the computers and all the smartphones they always speak over tcp ap probably over rest rest over tc or http over tcp ap and all the other protocols that are for controlling the devices these are two separate words actually and all these other protocols will be used by non-programmable devices To, to integrate with each other, to configure, and then as soon as possible, we'll try to get the data to something which is more easy to manage, more standard as a protocol. Hmm? So this network architecture is dual. All the specific uh, smart home protocols and the network connectivity in general. Okay, so this is, uh, I said, uh, this was one, one was one of the slides at the beginning on, of the course that I showed you in the first weeks. Uh, now I hope uh, we try to, un with the understanding of the projects, uh, to motivate better what is the content here and how to decide that. Mm. So that if you have, uh, uh, you can maybe start to revise or maybe understanding better the comments that we made on your D2 deliverable. And uh, uh, if you have other questions or discussions, now you know that from now on most of the hours uh, will be just uh, uh, work group hours in the lab so all the mondays except today there's still uh, an exercise to do but basically uh, most of the time from now to the end of the course will be assisting you and so if you have ideas uh, problems uh, or or you, you don't you need some help in making some choices uh, will uh, uh, the, the, the oh, you can always ask online, but uh, the, the hours of, of, of the Mondays will be just for that. Okay. Okay. So that speaking of the lab, uh, I give you some couple of minutes or three minutes to run to the Ladispe for the next uh, lab. Thank you.